Answers video, one of my answers videos. Philosophication asked, what do you think can be done about benevolent racism, like being racist in a way that makes you inappropriately kinder to someone from another race rather than treat them like a normal person? Well, racism is racism. We're all racist to some degree. We'd like to pretend otherwise, but it would just be a lie. We all judge things based on appearance. Um, it's just something that we do. It's, and without it, we probably wouldn't survived. We probably wouldn't have survived as a species. We all have to learn when our judgments are inappropriate. We can't really find this kind of thing out truly by just, I mean, we can find it out to a degree, but only one side of it. Uh, when we ask someone, uh, you know, the, the right questions and we're really, really prepared for blunt, honest answers, you know, we usually have to find out about this sort of thing through realizations. We have to have had seen something ourselves that goes contrary to the uh, beliefs that we held contrary to the stereotypes that we had built up in our minds. You know, at that point, you know, if we did actually talk to someone and got a lot of, talk to a lot of people and got a lot of input on this sort of thing, and then we eventually do have a major realization, um, and it's, it's hits us a lot harder. It's much more powerful of a realization and it could change our outlook that much more, could change our life that much more. Anyway, I, I still have some amount of the positive racism thing, just in the element of, um, I think black people have superior skin. Um, to me, this is just seems kind of scientific. They're, they're not missing melanin. My skin is missing melanin. Uh, you know, I get sunburned easily. Uh, you know, it, it, some people might be able to call that racist. Is it? Well, technically... One could consider that racist, but would you really consider that racist? Just saying, you know, hey, someone who has dark skin has superior skin. Not because of the appearance, but because of just it's not missing something. There's also a point where people will be extra nice to those who they believe come from a different culture. They don't want to do anything to offend the person from that culture. They're they they don't want to treat anyone poorly. I mean, people want to treat others with respect, but if they don't know where those levels of respect are going to be, you know, all they can really do is just try to treat people extra nice. And if that doesn't work, then they, they don't know what to do. I mean, let's be honest here. If, if someone came up to me with that whole what's up, what's up thing, I'm not going to do that because uh, uh, you don't want to know what I'm not wearing. But, uh... You know, they do that whole thing with their hands and, uh, what's up, what's up? Uh, if, if someone comes up to me, it doesn't matter to me what nationality they are. Um, they come up to me with that kind of attitude. I'm going to, you know, treat them with kid gloves. I, I mean, and, and if it's, and if it's obvious, if someone comes up to me that it's obvious that they come from a culture that would normally be doing that and they come up to me and they still, ha you know, they seem like they're going to be, a lot nicer they're not doing that what's up thing but I'm still gonna be a little nervous because I don't I, I'm still gonna treat that person with kid gloves because it's just like I don't know what offends this person so now you know if I had enough experience with those from that culture those kind of cultures to where I wouldn't really you know, to, to that that shows me that my the stereotypes I built up in my mind are wrong. Then you know maybe things would be different. Um, I mean honestly, I I've been finding a lot more lately that people don't actually really have as much of a problem with gay people as what I would think. Um, they're not going to people aren't going to treat someone gay poorly as poorly as I thought. Um, I mean, I've been pretty out of the closet more lately when, when, you know, when I've been going out doing karaoke and I'm at some of these places that are a little rough, um, you know, I've let some people know and it's just like, you know, cause they'll, they'll ask me questions about, you know, they'll do the whole, do you have a girlfriend or do you have this or do you have that? And I just answer honestly and, 
it takes people by surprise, but I'm not, I've, so far I've not been treated poorly over it. And it might have to do with the fact that I'm, I'm masculine I, and I surprise them because they don't expect someone like me to be gay. I just kind of wonder whether or not the thing that that messes with a lot of the people ends up being the femininity part or the queenie part or the fact that those who aren't queenie usually aren't that out of the closet. They're not just upfront about things. They're nervous about the whole thing. They carry themselves in a way that, well, I shouldn't, uh, uh, you know, I'm scared kind of thing. And, man, I'm really rambling. I'm sorry about that. This, this, is, this is not the video that, this is not what you ask the question for. And I'm going into just a rant because I, 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 for me, for me personally, a lot of my fear of other cultures does revolve a lot around my being gay. I mean, what if they knew? You know, I mean, people will try to act like, people will ask me, you know, why is it so important that gay people let others know that they're gay? And it's just like, when, when people like to know about other people, they like to know what makes them tick. They like to know, it, they just like to analyze people. I mean, that's just a normal thing. You want to meet someone, you want to get to know something about them, more about them, then you're going to analyze them. And, and if you're analyzing them, I mean, you can, at some point, someone's going to be thinking, oh, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have any kids? Do you have, you know, all these kinds of questions that get asked. And, you know, if, if the person knows you're gay, then they're going to ask a totally different set of questions. And they might have a bunch of curiosities. And, you know, people will have those those standard questions that sometimes irritate gay people that, you know, oh, that well, you don't know that already about gay people? You know, whatever. I don't mind answering that kind of thing. You know, it, it, people ha are curious, so I'm going to satisfy their curiosity in, in their, their questions and stuff. But you know, just in general, you know, when, when someone knows more about you, they know some element like that about you, it's they're able to actually have a conversation easier with you. I mean, I can fake my way through something and just act and pretend that I'm straight, but I don't understand doing that anymore. I'm just, I'm just, I'm kind of done with it. I'm, I'm done with any sort of pretending on that. Um, and I didn't know that's what I was doing before, really. Um, I'd be out of the closet if someone asks me, but I wouldn't, I don't know. I would just kind of pretend to be straight. I don't know. It's odd. Um, I mean, honestly, the... Uh, I mean, people, a lot of gay men will try to say, oh, my being gay doesn't really change anything about, about me other than who I, you know, want to sleep with. And I'm like, uh, no. No, that's not the case. Uh, you... Your sexuality really... <laughs> It, it, it affects your whole worldview. It affects your view about a lot of things. So to claim that 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 inter integral of a part of someone isn't going to affect a lot of things about them, and that's just kind of a strange thing to to think. You know, it, being gay does affect a number of things about a person. Not necessarily the things that people would expect. It's not the thing of, oh, I'm going to like uh, EDM and I'm going to like makeup and I'm going. You know, it doesn't mean that kind of thing, but there are certain values that are going to be a little bit different. We, 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 I, don't, I don't know how people can deny that. I mean, it's not... I don't know. I don't know. Um, rambling again. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, and I'm hoping this video is even going to work because it's really choppy looking right now. Um, okay. Doof Cop 12345 ask about my view on animal rights and Outpat asks about vegetarianism, and I put these two together because my views on animal rights and vegetarianism sort of, of go a little bit together, and uh, uh, also just about my view on how we look at things in general. Um, let me first say this. We will never see any significant change in the way we even look at at other animals until we actually accept that we are animals ourselves. And all we can really try to do is 
to make the lives of the animals, of farmed animals, a little better. I mean, really, that's all we're going to be able to achieve. I may actually agree with a number of PETA's views about how we look at animals. They're actually correct about that stuff. The way we look at pets, our pets, our slaves. I mean, no matter how you look at it, I mean, yes, you, you, you love your slaves, but they're still your slaves. It's, 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 that's just what we do. It's part of that whole thing I've talked about. The, our, our, our society is built on, on um, uh, ownership, control, and manipulation. And those things are still very much a big part. Um, I know, the, the way that PETA tries to handle the, the whole thing with, with animals, the way they handle the whole situation, they try, the way they try to tell people about what we do is just over the top, and, and their, their methodology that they go into with, with their activism it just is completely unproductive, and it's completely, it destroys their cause. It just, it, they destroy their own cause. Nobody takes them seriously because they go to such extremes. But PETA does not ever take it a step further. Um, it's all of life that we should be respecting. Plants, it, it, I mean, why are we not respecting plants, too? I mean, that might sound crazy to you, but it's all life. It's all life. We don't seem to respect life in general. We don't look at how the way we manipulate things. You know, we manipulate plants. We manipulate other animals. Um... And, and we've, man we've manipulated people. We still manipulate people. We still have the ownership with people. We have marriage still. I mean, marriage itself is people basically becoming property of each other. Um, you know, all, all, this, all these things are related to each other. They're, they're part of this negative pattern that we have. If we were to really see ourselves as what we are, as the animals that we are, we would eventually realize that our treatment of animals is just the tip of the iceberg as far as tackling our problems uh, and, and denial of what we do as a society. This doesn't mean we should stop everything we're doing. It, it, just, it just means that we should be aware of what we're doing. We should be conscious of what we're doing. And so we can work on, also so we can work on ways of reducing some of the negative effects of those things. I mean, as I've said in other, in other videos, you know, we can, those three pillars I talk about, uh, control, manipulation, and ownership, uh, if we try to get, actually destroy or get rid of any one of those, our, our culture's toast, our government's toast, our government cannot withstand a culture that is the antithesis of its principles, so you, you can't do that. You know, you can't completely get rid of it, but you can reduce the negative effects, and we can look at what we do so we can... I mean, we just need to be conscious of this shit. We, we need to, to... If we look at this stuff, we can eventually balance out our actions with... Basically with what is right for everything living on this planet. I think being a vegetarian for these kinds of purposes is just useless in this regard because it doesn't really get us any, clo really get us any closer to seeing our patterns as animals and our patterns as... You know what we do to the rest of the world. We it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really help us see our shitty patterns. It just doesn't. All we end up doing is potentially making potentially see. Let me stress this: potentially making poorer health choices for ourselves to where we might be missing some nutrients. Because let's face it, most people don't know shit about nutrition. Um. Is is vegetarian, you know, a more moral choice? You know, if we're trying to look at things from the larger perspective, and yeah, it would probably be a more moral choice because we're not supporting the farms that do this to animals, but it, it does not change our attitude about animals and, or our placement in the rest of the world or our view on life. And personally, I think veganism is just asking for health problems unless you are really, really well-tuned to nutrition. If you're well tuned to nutrition, you're really, I mean, you know what you're doing, then veganism can work great for you. So I'm not trying to make, say that vegans can't be healthy, because they can. You've just got to be very, very conscious of nutrition, a lot more conscious than you are when you're 
eating meat and vegetables. I mean, it's... So... Okay. Um... Oh, I can't remember who asked this. Um, they were asking what singing exercises I do to get to the point where I'm at. Um, I've been singing since I was in daycare. I've been told that I would hum in my sleep and stuff. I've been, um, I took choir throughout public school and also in uh, college. Uh, the couple of years I was in college, I took a choir there too. Um, but I mean, in general, you know, when it comes to my practicing, I'll just, I'll try to practice scales that I know that I'm struggling with. Or if there is a, a transition between two notes or three notes that I'm struggling with, I'll, I'll sing those, those notes over and over and over again to, so I can get the transition right. Um, I will also sometimes practice how my vibrato comes out and I'll practice slowing it down and speeding it up and also practice the there's two types of vibratos kind of I mean one of them it does pitch and the other one does volume up and down um, and so I'll you know practice between those methodologies uh, and mess around with that um, but that's uh, that's mainly what I do. Shane Pinson asked what kind of setup I use for my videos. Well, I have a here I have a Life Cam Studio. It's a Microsoft Life Cam Studio camera that uh, webcam that I adjust everything manually. Um, you know the white balance, the saturation, the uh, the exposure, the uh, the, there's there's a uh, there's just a whole number of, of settings um, that I adjust uh, manually on it to get it to look like it does. Um, I have a Sterling ST55 microphone that I that I uh, you know this microphone. Um, Um, and I've been using that for years um, and uh, I'm gonna end this video with just a clip of uh, what my setup looks like from uh, the perspective of a camcorder my goodness this is a fucking long video holy shit I'm sorry about that here are the lights that I have I have paper in front of them and I have them on each side of the monitor and there's the mic that I set up um, and here's the computer that I use for that. I use Cubase to uh, do the live processing on things. Um, and yeah, that's how I do this.